Enter Incoming Parts Invoice or Restock Parts. The reason why we enter all incoming parts invoices into Max Tracks is threefold. First, we want to account for the parts that we have on hand. Second, we want to track our purchases as this is a huge investment and for bookkeeping purposes. The third, we want to track from whom we purchase these parts, for how much and when, as well as who we sold the parts to, for submitting warranties, tracking price changes to us, and updating selling prices to our customers. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts of this feature. From the toolbar, click Restock Parts to open your list of open Restock Parts invoices. If we had any Restock Parts invoices started, they would be listed here, but we're just going to start a new one from scratch. Click the Input Receive Vendor Invoice button to open your vendor list, and we're going to double click on a vendor. We'll say Factory Motor Parts. Now here, enter the amount of the vendor paper invoice you're going to duplicate in Max Tracks. This feature was designed to help you double check your data entry, making sure parts entered are priced correctly, and the total amount in the system matches the actual amount of the paper invoice. Now we could just click Cancel to bypass this feature, which we're going to do in this practice version, but it's well worth the effort to enter this in. Next, we click the Add Line Item button and look at all these methods to add parts, sublets, cores, credits. Let's select from Parts List first. We can select a search by part number, description, or size, but let's just enter the part number. And if the part has not been entered into the system before, the list window will eventually list no parts at all. Then we would click the Add Part button to start the Add a Part wizard. But let's enter a part that we know is on the list. So when the part we want appears, we can select that part by double clicking on it or highlight the part and click the Select button down here. And this opens the Detail Information window. Enter your quantity to order the cost for the part, and a core charge if there is one. And we can assign this part to inventory stock, to a particular repair order, or a specific parts invoice. And we'll be prompted to add that part to that RO or parts invoice it was specifically ordered for. So you'll see here in a minute, we're actually assigning a purchase order at the individual part level, not the entire restock parts invoice level so we can have parts assigned to different ROs on the same restock parts ticket. Now if the vendor had a different part number or description than the number and description we have in the system for this part, we would enter it here. But we'll just click OK, or we could click the Add Another button if we wanted to return to the part search window. But let's just click OK. Now let's click Add Line Item again and check out some of these other options for entering restock parts invoices. We could click on Autofill from Low Stock Parts List, and here are all the parts we need to order. Some because they're already on repair orders to be used for a specific job. See, these are negative under the Available column. And some we have designated as a stocked part, where our best quantity is to have 12 on hand. We could also select to view only Low Stock Parts that we typically order from Factory Motor Parts by clicking this radio button. So let's click on All Parts again and select that oil filter and click OK. Now let's see how you would handle a credit on a vendor invoice. Click on the Receive Credit for Return Parts option and this will open our parts list to select the part. And there has to be an amount in inventory to be able to return it or else the system will let us know. Now let's select the head bolt set and if we had purchased this part from this vendor before, and we probably would have since we're returning it to them, the cost is already filled out for us. Double check the quantity, and since this is a return, this assign section doesn't apply. So we'll just click OK. And here it is a negative, a credit on this invoice. Another option for the restock parts invoice is a sublet. Select Choose from Sublet Labors list to open our list of sublet labor services that we might have purchased. Note Max Tracks treats sublets kind of like a part in a way that it tracks the purchases and it puts it in its own special inventory section and then pulls it from that inventory section when you put it on the RO to sell it to the customer. Now it doesn't track a quantity like you would with a part but it does track money spent to pay for that sublet and wants you to be sure to bill that out. 
and you can reserve it for a specific repair order just like a part. We'll just click OK. And here we get this message. The system wants to make sure you get this sublet billed out, so it prompts us to either go back to the purchase order and assign it, or the repair order for the sublet bill was already closed, or I just don't want to assign it to anything. That's okay too, it's just double checking. So we'll just say the repair order was already closed. Our next option is to receive a credit for a returned sublet, just like a part. We select the sublet credit from the list, and enter the amount we're receiving a credit for, and click OK. So here's a good example of why we would want to just skip assigning the sublet to anyone. It's a credit. Next, we'll choose from any open parts orders. Now, if we had created a purchase order for these parts that we just received, we could see if they're listed on any of these open purchase orders. Just tag on the part that should actually be on this restock parts invoice, and click OK. And the system will take that part off that purchase order and add it to this restock invoice. We also manage our cores from here. Select Enter New Core Charge to open our parts list, and the system will only apply a core charge for that selected part, not the actual part. Typically, when we select to add a new part, the system will prompt us to add the core charge as well. But sometimes these things get divided up between invoices, and we would need a way to enter it into the system. And here's that way. Let's add another part that we know we have a core charge for. Let's say this starter. And see what the system does? The core cost is already preloaded for us. We just enter our quantity and cost. And if we ordered two of this part, for example, it would double our core cost as well. Now let's say we receive credit for a returned used core. It will open our list of used cores in the system, and in this case, cores purchased from factory directly. Or we could choose to look at all the used cores we have on hand in the system, but we'll just click in the return column, click OK, and the core credit is posted on our restock parts invoice. Now let's say we want to purchase used cores. We would just select the part from the list, enter in the used core amount, just like a part, and a cost. And last, we have shop supply. This window is where we can list parts purchased as shop supplies that you're not going to resell individually. So you would not want to put those parts into inventory, but you might want to enter the part number for those shop supplies that you bought just for reference and the total dollar amount for those purchased shop supplies. Now I get asked time and again, what do I do if I buy brake clean, for example, and sell a can with some jobs and then use the rest of the cans around the shop as shop supply? Well, what I always did was to buy a case, take 12 cans, I would enter six into inventory under the brake clean part number and put the other six in the system as shop supply using the shop supply function now one last note here, if you have a credit for a shop supply item, you can enter a minus sign at the beginning of this amount to reflect that credit. Woo, now this is a menagerie we bought here from Factory Motor Parts, but let's look at a few more of these fields and post this invoice. The packing slip number goes here for reference, and the invoice number is entered here. But I usually just click OK Save when I've entered all of my parts, and the system prompts me to enter that number. I'll show you that in just a moment. The logged on person's initials are here, or you can change them. The invoice date and date received are today's date by default, so you can edit those. And the due date is auto-populated according to how I have it set up in my vendor record. And for this vendor, all invoices entered in the month of March are due by April 15th. Miscellaneous charges, which is another place you can enter your shop supply charges without detail, post to the general ledger under cost of goods sold miscellaneous supply, which is also where your shop supply charges go when you put in that detail. Discounts are entered here and post as income purchase discounts on your general ledger. And note, if you get a discount for paying your parts bill by the 10th of the month in exchange for a 2% discount from the vendor, that is done at the vendor record level when you pay the bill. You actually don't enter those early payment discounts into this field. This is for actual discounts given on the restock parts invoice. 
handling and freight get posted to their own shipping expenses on the general ledger. And freight can get a bit tricky here. If you were to bill your freight out to your customer, you can track it into the system and out of the system as a sublet or just enter the expense here and charge the customer for the freight as a labor service. We can click here to print barcode labels for the parts listed on this restock parts invoice. And one last thing before we post, the edit and delete buttons apply to the highlighted part above. And this is how we could open up that detail information screen and change a price or change a quantity. So let's just click OK Save. And we could save this restock parts invoice if we're not done entering all the information. Or here we're just going to click Post and Update Inventory. And this will post all the parts to the parts list and charge this invoice to the vendor account. And remember, we didn't enter a target amount at the beginning. This prompts us to check our math and correct it or post the invoice anyway. So we'll just post anyway. I just wait for the system to prompt me for the vendor invoice. And here it is. Enter the invoice number and we're done. Now, even if you're paying cash or check for this invoice right away, you still have to do a two-step process, which is first posting the invoice to the vendor account and then going into that vendor account or clicking on pay bills and paying it out of there. Or you can always use the vendor quick check feature. And this concludes the lesson on restock parts.